Hi, I'm Dorian from Dorian Think to Success. In this video, I'm going to explain the driving test report sheet, otherwise known as the DL25. Because the waiting times are really long at this point in time, if you've got a driving test booked, you really want to know what the examiner's looking for. So in this video, I'm going to explain what he's looking for in every box. At the beginning of your driving test, the examiner will call you over and get you to read the two declarations. The first one says the car is insured for you to drive. If you're using a driving instructor's car, it will be insured for you to drive. If you're taking your own car, make sure you've got learning insurance and make sure it's covered for a driving test, but your insurance company can help you out with that. And the second declaration says you are a UK resident for at least 185 days in the last 12 months. You can read both declarations, then sign it or just sign it, but the test will not take place until you sign it. Once you sign it, at the time of filming, we're still wearing face masks to drive in test, so the examiner will ask you to drop your face mask so he can make sure the picture looks like you. And then he will check your signature that's on the license compared to what you signed on the declaration. Once he's happy with both parts, he will then escort you outside of the building and you get to read a registration plate from a certain distance. Now what pupils do not realise is when you're actually nervous, your eyesight goes a little bit blurry. So if you do wear glasses and contact lenses, please take them with you. The amount of pupils who try to read it without glasses or contact lenses. If you don't read it with normally within normal three attempts, they will normally get a tape measure and then measure it to the exact inch and then give you another couple of goes as well. But if you don't pass your eyesight test, you are not taking your driving test. It will not take place. Box 1B, you do not need to worry about because you've passed your theory test, so it doesn't come into that category. Box 2, the control stop, otherwise known as the emergency stop. This is now conducted in one in every free driving test. To be honest, with a modern day car with ABS, you don't really need to know how to control the skid, the car really does it for you. But in this case, if the examiner asks you to do an emergency stop on your test, or the control stop on your driving test, you need to show that you can stop the car under control. This is without skidding, without stalling the car. Um, but take into account the weather conditions as well. It's going to take you longer to stop. Um, with practice with your instructor, you should be able to get this um, done down to a T. But don't forget when moving off, which is common, um, not checking your blind spots. You are now in the middle of the road, so make sure you check both blind spots. Box three, reverse to the left, has been taken out of the driving test. So has box six, turning the road. But you will still do four maneuvers, or you will learn four maneuvers on your driving lessons with your driving instructor. The maneuvers are reverse park or parallel park, where you pull up alongside the car, reverse back, staying reasonably close to the curb, and finishing within two car lengths. You've got bay parking forwards, bay parking backwards and reversing on the right where you pull up on the wrong side of the road and reverse back at least two car lengths. All four maneuvers are the same key elements, a slow moving car and all round observations including blind spots. You have to include your blind spots as you're going back, don't just reverse on your mirrors. You will only get one maneuver on the day of your driving test, you'll learn four but you only get one on the day of the driving test. What you need to be doing and showing, demonstrating to the examiner, is that you're gonna keep the car nice and slow, and like I said, effective observation with blind spots thrown in. Box seven is vehicle checks. In other words, this is your show me, tell me questions. You're gonna get one show me, one tell me question. The tell me question will be done at the test center before you start the car and the show me one will be done on the move while you're driving but it will be conducted when it's safe to do so. Um, your instructor will go through the show me tell me questions on their particular car 
my advice I, that I always give my people is watch YouTube videos to be fair. Um, learn the answers, you're not learning it parrot fashion, you're just trying to um, keep the keywords in and most of the keywords, especially for under the bonnet, a minimum, maximum, that type of thing. And your instructor will show you where everything is on their particular car. Box 11 precautions. To be fair, this is normally your cockpit drill, um, but the examiner knows you drove yourself to the test centre. Um, my advice though is double check to make sure you're happy with the mirrors when you go into the car and you're happy with the seating position. Your test has now started, you're going to feel a little bit more nervous, a little bit more tense than you did when you first drove to the test centre. So you might as well just double check it while you're stationary at the test centre. Also add in checking the handbrake is on and it's in neutral before starting the engine. Box 12, control. So as you're driving around your test room, the examiner's watching and feeling how you use the accelerator, clutch, gears, foot brake, parking brake, otherwise known as the handbrake, and your steering wheel. So you will need to be able to demonstrate that you can use all the controls smoothly and in correct time. This means less wear and tear on your vehicle and a smoother ride for your passengers, especially the examiner. Box 13, moving off. During your test, you will be asked to be parked. You will be asked to stop on a level gradient, uphill gradient and an angle start. Now you need to demonstrate you can move away safely and under control. In terms of control, obviously not stalling the car on a regular basis and the observation side of it is blind spots. You must remember blind spots. The amount of people that always say, yeah, all round observation, but for them, all round observation means checking the mirrors. The examiner is looking for blind spot checks more than anything else when it comes to moving off. Box 14, use of mirrors. Take note, there's three sections in this. Use of mirrors before you signal, use of mirrors before you change direction, use of mirrors before you change your speed. Now let me just quickly explain this. The hazard perception that you guys have to do and pass before you can take a driving test, this is what it's about. The click represents in the video you checking the mirrors. If you was driving in the video live for real, that click is you checking the mirrors so you can see how big this mirror section is. So you have to demonstrate you can use the mirrors safely and effectively acting correctly upon what you saw. So where mirrors are not enough, for example, to cover blind spots, then you must take effective and rare observation. You must always check this carefully before signaling, changing direction or changing speed. You need to demonstrate you can use your MSM routine effectively. Box 15, signals. So signal necessary, signal correctly, and signal timed. So you should only use the signals shown in the highway code. So you mustn't wave people across, give a nod of a head. So once you do that, to be fair, your test is gonna be done and dust, it's gonna be over. So only use the official signals in the highway code. You should have signals clearly to let others know what you intend to do. This is particularly important if it would help other road users or pedestrians. You should have always signaled in good time and ensure that the signal had been switched off after the maneuver had been completed. You should not beckon to pedestrians to cross the road. So don't wave pedestrians to go. If you want someone to go, just stop. Let them make up their own mind. Because you want them to go, it doesn't mean that the bike coming down past you is gonna let them go as well. Box 16, clearance to obstructions. Your normal driving position should be roughly about a metre away from the curb or metre away from parked cars where possible. Um, the examiner will, talking from my test route, um, test centre, sorry, Sidcup, uh, some of the roads are really narrow so you can't be a metre away from the cars when you're driving down these routes. But um, you will reduce your speed to compensate for lack of space. So less space, less speed. But ideally you should be about a metre away with enough clearance. The other thing you need to do is watch out for ch um, changing situations such as pedestrians walking out from between parked cars, doors opening and vehicles trying to move off. You should have been prepared to slow down or stop if needed and required in situations. So always bear in mind 
um, your distance from the left when you are taking your driving test. Box 17, response to signs and signal. To be fair, this is your theory test in a nutshell. Um, you should know your signs and road markers before going through your driving test because you need to show that you can react quickly to all traffic signs, road marking, traffic lights and pedestrian crossings. You should have obeyed the signals given by police officers, traffic wardens, highway agency officers and school crossing patrols. You should watch out for signals given by other road users and carry on only when you're happy it's safe to do so. Don't take risk on your driving test. If in doubt, slow the car down. But as I stress to all my pupils, know your road markings and know your traffic signs because you do need to respond to them in the right manner. Box 18, use of speed. During your driving test, you need to make reasonable progress along the road. You needed to keep in mind the road traffic and weather conditions, road signs and speed limits. You needed to show confidence based on sound judgment. Remember at all times you should have been able to stop within the distance you can see to be clear. Don't go speedy. Remember the speed limit is the limit, not the target. So don't start doing 30 miles now dead on just because it's the, um, the limit. Box 19, following distance. On your driving test, you should always keep a safe distance between you and the vehicle in front. You should be able to stop safely well within the distance you can see to be clear. You should leave extra distance in wet or slippery conditions. Leave enough space when you are stopped in traffic queue. So let me just break that down for you. When you're in a 20 or 30 zone, you need, a, you need to leave enough distance between you and the car in front. So if the car broke suddenly in front of you, you still should be able to brake smoothly and gently, not harshly. Now, when you're doing 14 miles an hour or more, you want to be leaving a two second gap between you and the car in front if it's dry and four seconds if it's wet. This is all fairy stuff as well that you should know because obviously you're now approaching a driving test and up to 10 times longer in ice and snow. When you stop in traffic behind the vehicle, you want to stop so you can see tires and tarmac, otherwise known as TNT. So as long as you can see the back tires just about touching the tarmac, that distance is good. If you can't see the tarmac, you're too close. And if you can see a lot of the tarmac, you're too far back. So take all this into consideration when you are driving. Box 20, progress, making progress at appropriate speed and avoiding undue hesitation. This is known as unnecessary hesitation. On your test, you need to show that you can drive at a realistic speed appropriate to the road and traffic conditions. You needed to approach all hazards at a safe, controlled speed without being overcautious or slowing or stopping other road users. You should always be ready to move away from junctions as soon as it is safe and correct to do so. Driving too slowly can frustrate other drivers, which creates danger for yourself and others. In other words, lead to road rage. So again, you need to keep up with the flow of traffic when possible and avoid unnecessary hesitation. Box 21, junctions. So approach speed, observation, that's effective observation, turning right, turning left and cutting corners. So what the exam is looking for is for the correct use of mirror signal maneuver some instructors break it down to PSO as well but I won't go into all of that but basically your mirror signal maneuver procedure it also is looking for correct positioning and approach speed at junctions and roundabouts this is because these skills are essential for dealing with these hazards safely turning right across busy roads dual carriageways is particularly dangerous to drive safely and pass your test you must be confident that you can judge the speed and distance of oncoming traffic safely. You also need to look out for other road users emerging and turning at junctions and be ready to alter your course or stop. Be extra watchful in poor light or bad weather conditions for more vulnerable road users such as cyclists and motorcyclists. Box 22, judgment. Judgment in overtaking, judgment in meeting and judgment in crossing. So what your exam is looking for in this is assessing your judgment skills really throughout the test. 
you need to show sound judgment when overtaking traffic, meeting traffic or crossing the path of other road users. You should have only done this when it was safe and legal. You should have made your intentions clear and be sure that you understood the intentions of other road users. Box 23 positioning, normal driving and showing lane discipline. So you should have positioned your car in a safe position. Normally this would be keeping well to the left of the road, i.e. the meter away from the curb or park, um, parked cars. You needed to keep clear of parked vehicles and be positioned correctly for the direction that you intend to take. You needed to look for and be guided by road signs and road markings. Other road users may judge your intentions by where you are positioned, so be aware where you are at all times. Box 24, pedestrian crossings. You should be able to identify the different types of pedestrian crossings and take the correct action. You needed to monitor your speed and time your approach for crossings so that you can stop safely if you need to do so. You should also have paid particular attention where crossings were partially hidden by queuing or parked vehicles. You should also show consideration for elderly or infirm pedestrians who are trying to cross the road. This is also part of your theory training, your pelicans, puffins and toucans. Box 26, awareness and planning. Now for me, this is the biggest box on the sheet. If your awareness is strong and your planning is strong, your driving is strong. The way I teach my pupils is you are aware of the problem, you plan for the problem, so there is no problem. So there's nothing the examiner will mark or can mark because you're dealing with everything that you need to deal with. So what the examiner's looking for is that you are aware of other road users at all times. The examiner's looking to see that you plan ahead to judge what other road users are going to do. This will, this will allow you to predict how their actions will affect you and react in good time. You, you need to anticipate road and traffic conditions and act in good time, rather than reacting to them at the last moment. You should have taken particular care to consider the actions of the more vulnerable groups of road users, such as pedestrian, cyclists, other motorcyclists, horse riders and children. So yeah, plan well ahead to give yourself the best possible chance of passing your driving test. Box 27, auxiliary controls. To be fair, this is part of your show me, tell me. Your instructor will go over the controls on their car and win the wipers, the misters, but the examiner's looking for you to operate all your vehicle controls safely and effectively. The examiner will be looking to see that whilst on the move, you can keep proper control of your vehicle while using the secondary controls. These include the misters, heating controls, indicators, and windscreen wipers, and maybe your lights as well if it is dark and visibility is poor on the day of your driving test. Box 28, eco-safe driving. To be fair, on this part of the test, you can't fail your test for this. Um, you can pick up a maximum two faults, one for control and one for planning. Um, uh, the way I explain this to my people is just right gear, right time for the right situation. So you're not putting out all the fumes at the back of a car. So what the exam is looking for is for you to be driving in an eco-friendly manner. So considering your impact on the environment. So what he wants you to do is plan well ahead and choose appropriate gears. Avoid heavy braking and over revving of the engine, particularly when stopped or moving off. If you have to stop for a long period, such as at roadworks or railway crossings, consider stopping the engine to reduce pollution and save fuel. The examiner will also assess this on the test. However, as I said before, he can't fail for it, so it doesn't affect the overall result. If there's improvement needed, the examiner will give you feedback at the end of the driving test. At the end of the driving test, the examiner will guide you to where he wants you to be. So if you have bays at your test center, he will guide you into a particular bay. And if it's on road, he will guide you into a parking spot. At this point in time, he will say, make the car safe and then switch off, which is obviously your handbrake and neutral. And then he would just say, try to relax, taking your seatbelt off and he'll be totting the marks up. So I'm gonna show you the driving test report sheet again. And if you look at box 13, this is how it's marked. So box 13 safely, you're allowed four of these marks in one box. 
but you're not allowed any S's and you're not allowed any D's. At the time of filming, if you get a serious fault or a, a dangerous fault in your driving test, your test is over, they will bring you back. You don't complete the driving test at this point in time anymore. At some stage, we'll get back to where you complete the whole test, regardless of what the result is. At this point in time, you need 15 minor faults. So you'll have 15 or less, no S's, no D's. Now, if when he talks the marks up, if it's 15 or less, he will say congratulations, and then he will put the mark in the pass box. And if it's if he says sorry to say, he will now pull in the fail box. He will then go on to say if you failed it, would you like a debrief? Always say yes. As much as you're upset, disappointed, say yes. He will tell you what mistakes you've made and where it went wrong. If you've gone with an instructor, he will ask you, can your instructor listen in or do you want your instructor to listen in? Say yes. And um, there's no embarrassment on this. Some people are embarrassed, they don't want the instructor to, li to listen. But the examiner can probably go into more detail with your instructor, maybe even explain whereabouts on the test route it went wrong. And then your instructor can now put a lesson in place for you to sort that out. Because obviously if you failed it, you should be taking more lessons to correct any faults. But let's just say be positive. The examiner said congratulations. He will then go on to fill in the pass certificate, which will become your temporary license. It means you can drive straight away as long as you make everything legal. That means change your insurance over in your car. And um, yeah, just change insurance over in your car to full insurance, not lens insurance anymore. And you can drive straight away. This is where you need to be driving on your own before you go for your driving test really because basically that's what you're doing on the day of a driving test you're driving on your own no help if your instructor is still prompting you check mirrors change gears what does this road sign mean you're probably not ready for your driving test i know at this point in time the urge to take a driving test because the waiting time is so long and what this, what most people are saying now i just want to have a go um i've done a video on the instructor's um, standards check test which the DVSA have brought in instructors aren't going to let pupils go now and have a go if you like so you really need to be ready if you're driving on your own un unaided by your instructor you're ready for a driving test but if you're still prompted by your instructor you're not really ready you just need to be honest with yourself it's better to just take more lessons and rather than take a test and fail it and then go to the back of the long queue but hopefully you got some value from this video if you did like comment subscribe i'm dorian from dorian think to success and hopefully i'll see you in the next video